My name's Nick Thorpe. I work for the BBC in Central Europe, a rare East European voice at this great gathering, and uh, I'll be chairing the round table here this afternoon. I'm joined on the round table by Sergio Fabrini, who is director of the Lewis School of Government and Professional, a uh, professor of political science and international relations in Rome. Cécile Barbier of the Observatoire Social Européen. Her research focuses on the institutional development of the EU, the challenges of enlargement, and issues related to citizenship and immigration. By Miguel Maduro from Portugal, director of the Global Governance Programme of the European University Institute. By Roberto Gualtieri, a member of the European Parliament, the Partito Democratico, and the chief negotiator for the Progressive Alliance of Socialists and Democrats on the European Monetary Union. And last but not least, by Stephen Booth, research director of Open Europe, where he works on EU regulation, justice, and home affairs. What I'd like to do with this roundtable is maintain the momentum of the last very exciting, I'm sure you'll agree, session. And so each, I will ask each of the participants to uh, say a few words at the beginning, five maximum, 10 minutes, on the subject of this round table, Euro crisis, demo crisis, the democratic crisis in whatever form we believe it exists in the European Union. But to keep some of that momentum from the last uh, session, it would be nice to, not for us just to talk as a round table, as a, a panel, and then open the floor for questions at the end. But I'd like to give you the opportunity during the round table to come in yourselves with comments. So at any point, if you would like to raise a hand or make a comment, I think we should let the panelists say their words right at the beginning. But from then on, if you'd like to interrupt, make a comment, and really, I think we should try to enjoy this final session and maintain that momentum from the last one. A word from me right at the beginning, just to provoke you all. A few weeks ago in Paris, uh, an American colleague of mine, uh, a journalist, said to me, the Eurozone crisis is the best story since Kosovo. <laughs> um, notwithstanding the sheer cynicism of my profession, I started to think a little about this, and of course, um, and I have to say, I w this is a colleague I was with in Kosovo and in Yugoslavia during the wars there, and when one thinks of it, the efforts of NATO, of a, a, a transnational alliance at that time, bombarding one country on the periphery in order to save the citizens or the human rights of another. If one looks again at the crisis now, the reaction of European institutions to bombard Greece, Spain, Portugal with money, this time not with missiles. It's an interesting analogy, one, one shouldn't stretch too far, but it's uh, with all the tensions that one saw back in the 1990s related within NATO towards uh, the Yugoslav crisis, the leadership at that time from Britain, interestingly, um, of course, with the United States, and here, leadership from Germany on an economic level. It's, it gives one pause for thought, anyway, the contrast between the crisis now and the crisis then, fortunately now with no military component. And on that semi-humorous note, but rather serious note too, I give the word, the word to Sergio. <laughs> 